Okay, so uh, my name is uh, Stephen Pearce. I'm from the east of England. Um, I'm a web developer uh, at a small web agency. Um, I've come here today to talk about uh, something I'm really passionate about, which is progressive web apps, um, and really uh, how it's an opportunity for, for GNOME, uh, potentially. Um, so what is a progressive web app? Well, uh, progressive web apps are really just um, websites um, that are installable. Um, and content is available offline. So um, they are made, yeah, they are essentially, yeah, made, made of web stuff. So HTML, CSS, JavaScript, everything you would accept, of, uh, everything you would expect to see in a website um, is, is what a progressive web app is built of, essentially. Uh, the thing, things that are new are uh, potentially to you are uh, manifest.json. Uh, Manifest.json is a file that describes what a, a website should, uh, well, how a browser should uh, r control a website, I guess. <laughs> what I mean by that is uh, when you uh, trigger a website to install on a home screen, on like a mobile device, um, the Manifest.json will say, you know, what's the long name for that website? What's the short name for it? Uh, what's the icon? Um, how do you want the uh, the browser frame to appear? So do you want like the address bar or just like a full screen experience? Uh, that kind of thing. Uh, another thing that's new is uh, serviceworker.js. It's not actually serviceworker.js. You could call it anything, um, but serviceworker is is the is the newer technology here. And essentially, that is a um, a kind of like a middleman proxy type thing that sits between your website and network resources. Serviceworker allows you to handle resources um, and say you know, essentially what you want to do with them, you know, making, them off, uh, making them cached offline. Um, to give you some examples, uh, this is one I really like. This is um, Twitter's new progressive web app. It replaces uh, mobile, the old mobile.twitter.com. Um, what I really like about it is that it's, it's, re it's really small. Um, I, mean, I don't know precisely off the top of my head how big Twitter uh, like the Android app say uh, it is, but I think it's like multiple hundred megs. Um, and of course, those apps are um, getting installed, uh, sorry, are getting updates every like week or so. And if you're on a metered data connection, um, that's a big deal because, you know, that's expensive. Um, so yeah, try it on your Android phone. Uh, you can try it on any phone, but I say Android because, um, you'll see why in a minute, but Android uh, supports progressive web apps, basically. Um, another one I really like is Pokedex. Um, I, I imagine everyone in here is familiar with Pokemon, so you'll know roughly what this is all about. Um, but Pokedex is uh, really, what I really like about it is that it shows how to do the web fast. Um, so, you know, UI animations are wicked fast. Um, you know, the, the person who, who uh, worked on this, Nolan Lawson, really cared about that kind of thing, and it shows. Um, so I definitely recommend trying that. It's also... Um, What's also really interesting is it uh, pushes, at the time it came out a year ago, it really pushed the, uh, the standard in like web client-side storage. So all, all of the assets you see there, like all the Pokemon and everything, all of that's cached on the device. So you know, if your network disappears, you can still see Pokemon. <laughs> so you know, why, why is this important for users? Um, so apps work both offline and in so-called Li-Fi conditions. Um, Li-Fi is kind of like uh, a term that was coined in the scene, um, but what it means is uh, if you've ever been like on a train or something and uh, you see that your phone says you've got 3G, um, but it's not really 3G because it's not reliable, all these things, you know, hitting the refresh button on reddit.com or whatever, um, that's Li-Fi, but, but essentially um, apps work in that state, so uh, the, the the web app itself will, will render. It's just and any content that you've already got cached, and then uh, new content will come in when you when the network is available. Uh, we basically, you know, are, we're testing for network connectivity. Essentially, we assume you haven't got any, and then enhance when the network's available. Um, PWA is just, yeah, like I said, are, are really small, um, unlike their native counterparts. Typically, um, again, that's valuable for. Uh, you know, if you're on metered data connections and things like that, poorer countries, uh, that's, that's the consideration. Um, push notifications are valuable, obviously. Um, adding to home screen is nice because um, if it's a website you frequent often, 
Uh, you can pin that thing on, on your desktop phone. Um, and yeah, it's available to you. Um, HTTPS meaning um, every uh, service worker enabled website has to be HTTPS enabled. So you know, it guarantees um, that security. Um, another thing I really like is uh, the simpler app, uh, simpler app permissions model. Um, because uh, it's not necessarily true anymore, but um, because the Android SDK changed some things. But um, there are still a lot of Android apps in the App Store that ask for all of their permissions up front. Um, on the web, um, you have an opportunity to uh, ask for them in the right context. So as an example, you might be looking at a map. Um, and if the map asks for your location, it's pretty obvious. Like, you know, it's for that context. Um, and of course, yeah, they're, they're really fast. Uh, progressive web apps are supposed to be um, fast. <laughs> and um, there's, there's another technology in Service Worker called Streams, which means that everything, um, essentially, uh, content, content is streamable. So anything that you see above the fold, which is everything you know, before you start scrolling, uh, should render out really quickly. So we are talking about websites here that um, should feel faster than native apps in a lot of cases. Um, why is it important for businesses? Um, adding to the home screen or activities overview um, is valuable, obviously, because it gives consumers an opportunity to re-engage with that brand or service. Um, again, yeah, re-engagement with push notifications, same reason. Um, because you're caching um, all, a lot of your content, um, I, use, I use Wikipedia as an example, but um, if you're hitting the same sort of article over and over again, um, that, all of that content is on your device, so you're not doing new network requests. Um, so that's obviously saving money. Um, we're reducing the bounce rate because, because the web's fast, essentially. Um, so when the web is, uh, you know, when UIs are fast and a pleasure to use, um, users don't tend to drop. Um, there's no friction in, in the experience, essentially. Um, apps become linkable. So what I mean by that is um, it, it's, it makes marketing easier um, because the apps are available at URL endpoints. So you can share one of those on Twitter, um, and a tweet can go viral. Um, yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, and of course, it's open web technology, so there's no like having to train people on Swift or uh, Java or whatever everyone's doing on native, um, the, the barriers to entry are really low with, with web technology. Um, why it's important for GNOME is, um, yeah, there's an opportunity here to, um, to, to lead by putting progressive web apps on the desktop before anybody else. Um, I'll show you the slide in a minute, but um, at the moment, really, it seems that progressive web apps are mostly on Android. And there are commitments from Microsoft to do the same, but again, they're not shipping. Um, so there's, there's, an, there's a window of opportunity here. Um, a world of apps um, become instantly available. So as soon as services like um, SoundCloud, Spotify, if, if all these guys do native, uh, sorry, if all these guys do web experiences in a progressive web app nature, they, are, they become available to us essentially for free. Um, we, we, all we have to do is the, the engineering to support it. And that ultimately makes uh, GNOME Desktop a, a more desirable platform for users. Um, and of course, it's about winning back front-end developer mindshare. Um, I've been using a Mac for the last couple of years, um, but I'm trying to come back to, to a free software desktop. And I'd like to see these, this kind of tooling available um, on, on this desktop. Um, so this is kind of like the picture today of um, like service worker support in, in desktop browsers. Uh, sorry, mobile and obviously desktop as well. Um, but think mobile. <laughs> so um, Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Samsung Internet, Edge, they're all shipping service worker technology. Not all of them do uh, the deep, deep, like, uh, deep app integration. Um, so... Yeah, like Chrome obviously is isn't like part of the part of your platform typically. Firefox isn't, so they don't. Um, you don't typically find uh, like add to home screen functionality on a desktop, say. But you, but you might do on mobile. Um, and yeah, uh, Chrome, sorry, on Android obviously supports that. Where we don't see this support is in Safari, and it's pretty obvious when you think about it because. Um, 
this idea directly competes with their App Store model. Um, so yeah, um, really, um, I, I don't have all the answers here, but really uh, what, what I hope is that, um, well, what I want to say is that you know, Gnome needs to demonstrate um, that Epiphany can lead in this area. Um, I want to see Epiphany on, on this list and lists like that whenever we're talking about some of these like cutting edge web, web features. Um, so for this to become a reality, uh, PWAs need to be on the roadmap for WebKit um, and Epiphany. Um, and yeah, if we do this, uh, GNOME Web will be considered seriously by web developers. Um, and we'll see you know, the, the emblem for Epiphany on, on, these, on these lists. Um, finally, just some, some resources. Um, this is basically just a list of things I've collected. Um, these, are, these are resources that I've found valuable when learning, learning about this tech. Um, Chrome Developers on YouTube has a bunch of playlists. Um, there was the Progressive Web App uh, Summit last year. Uh, I attended, actually, um, and uh, with talks on, on, on the topic. Um, and they recently did about uh, like quite a large series of like, uh, like courseware material. Um, Google Web Fundamentals is just a really good website that um, talks about all the different component parts of progressive web apps, because there's a lot to it. Um, obviously, I've only got a small amount of time to talk. Uh, and obviously, grab me afterwards. You can do that. That's fine. Uh, um, PWA Newsletter is another great one just for like catching up on what's happening in the scene. Um, Stats is great for if, if you're looking to make the business case. Um, there's statistics you can use, um, typically talking about conversion rates and things like that. Um, you know, as an example, um, well, I don't really know the numbers off the top of my head, but like Booking.com and sites like that have used, have begun rolling out this kind of technology in, uh, in like, uh, in like ticket, uh, well, baskets, I guess. You know, <laughs> where you, for where you find tickets, like that page has been uh, sectioned off as like a progressive web app uh, that you can, you know, pull up. There's your tickets. Um, but stats like that are available there. Uh, PWA rocks and PWA directory are essentially listings of examples of all these sorts of apps. Um, PWA directory is bringing in apps um, that have been tested against a tool called Lighthouse, um, which is uh, kind of like a testing framework for progressive web apps. I believe it's built into Chrome now. Um, but it's, it li yeah, it's listing all of those apps out. And PWA Rocks is a sort of a manual submission type thing uh, with a bunch of examples on. Um, and then, yeah, of course, at the bottom, I just said, yeah, check out some of those other things because um, the docs at MDN are great. You'll find spec information on what WD and W3C, follow web influences, that kind of thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so thanks. <laughs> I believe there's time for questions. I'll, I'll try. <laughs> Hang on, I need, I need some water first. <laughs> Sorry, go on. So you said web apps are a lot smaller than applications from the App Store. What sort of order of magnitude are we talking about here? Um, massive, really, I guess, because um, if, if Twitter's weighing in, let's say, like 100 meg or something, um, I, you could load um, your average your average web front end is measured in like you know zero to ten megs tops, depending on like you know where how much JavaScript is being loaded, how many ads are coming down, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it's a massive it's a massive difference. Yeah. Hey. Looks like there's uh, two main uh, parts to implementing this. Uh, the first is manifest.js, right? Uh, which we currently have no support for in uh, GNOME Web. I hadn't heard of that until today. Are you, uh, I, I was going to say, are you sure? I think it does. It, I, uh, you can pin... I've, so basically, um, Epiphany, if you visit a website and you do the uh, like add to my dash thing, uh -huh. I believe that's reading that information from manifest.json. Um, unless it's not. Oh, I, oh, you're the expert. <laughs> Well, we, we, uh, I had a, uh, there was a contributor a year ago who improved how it looks for icons. And okay. So if, if manifest.js is stored in a specific place on the server, yeah, like on the root of the... Yeah, it's typically defined in the web It's entirely possible that it's been looking at manifest.js, and I just didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure about that. Okay, but uh, anyway... Uh, free to anyway, um, 
uh, making enhancements to that code is very easy. Uh, that's an easy newcomer's topic if uh, you or anyone else is interested in uh, touching that code. Uh, the second issue here is service workers. Um, so uh, that's not something that we would implement unless uh, Safari is going to implement it. Um, however, uh, I was asking Apple about this just a couple weeks ago. Um, uh, so they haven't made any final decisions yet, uh, but I, I think odds are favorable. Yeah. Uh, they, they're, um, there's definitely a substantial interest uh, within the WebKit uh, developers community. Um, the, uh, I, I think they would be interested in uh, uh, hearing more opinions on the topic because uh, we, don't, we don't get a lot of input from uh, web developers on the WebKit mailing lists. Um, so I, it, it's something that uh, our, uh, some of our customers have been interested in too. They want service workers and, well, you have to go to Chromium for that. Yeah, yeah. So that's competitive consideration as well. Thanks, cheers. Uh, so, so I guess my point is uh, that will probably come, probably. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's not an epiphany level feature, that's definitely a WebKit level. Okay. Hey, um, I have uh, a bit of experience getting um, Electron apps uh, packed up in, in Flatpak and yeah, uh, yeah. integrated with the GNOME desktop. I have uh, a couple of advantages and disadvantages that might apply to PWAs as well. I think, um, well, uh, one advantage that PW PWAs have even more than Electron apps is that they, um, well, like you said in your talk, they're designed for uh, you know, offline or unreliable internet um, conditions, which you know, it, it, it's better than a lot of uh, existing apps do currently. So that's, that would be really good. And there, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of them. <laughs> so it's good that we would be increasing the uh, selection of apps you know, available to GNOME users. Um, so, but you know, from Electron, there are a couple of really serious disadvantages as well. Um, one is that the apps don't integrate whatsoever with the desktop experience. Yeah. Um, so it's it's kind of jarring to have uh, you know an an app open and it's got you know completely different uh, you know Chrome and icons and stuff than the, the rest of the desktop. Uh, the other one is that um, and this may not be true for PWAs, but it is true for Electron apps. They are so resource hungry, <laughs> uh, like you know, apps like uh, Slack. You know, it's um, you know going on in the background, using like a couple of percent of your CPU all the time, and 300 megs of memory just for an IRC client, basically. Uh, <laughs> and so my understanding is that a PWA would be also be running in a browser, uh, kind of. So uh, yeah, I guess. I would expect it might have the same disadvantage there. Yeah, it's, I think it's it's about equal. I think. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, would you be able to sort of like easily sandbox it in Flatpak, for example, by including the the web app and the and the manifest.json and the service worker like on top of uh, a Flatpak of the Epiphany or something like that? Um, if I'm honest, I'm I'm still learning about Flatpak, so uh, that's it's quite a new topic to me. I wouldn't actually be able to answer that that question. Okay. Uh, does anybody else instantly know a good answer to that? Or I don't know either. It would be really yeah. interesting <laughs> to find out. I mean, out. I'm I'm learning I'm learning like about this sort of stuff. You know, it's 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 quite new to me as well. So I think really all I'll, really all I'm trying to do here is just kind of like have this discussion. Um, yeah. So. You, Feel free to ping me afterwards, and we can have a chat about it. Sure. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Cool. Yes. Thank you very much.